I want to answer this question once and for all. Is AI going to take away cybersecurity jobs? And sneak peek, part of the answer is yes. But I'll also share in this video how to avoid getting replaced by AI. First of all, cybersecurity is not going anywhere. I want to say that upfront. I'm sure you guys have all seen the headlines by now about DeepSeek, as well as the overall impact of what it means for the AI sector as a whole. And just at a high level, DeepSeek is one of the newer AI models that have really gotten a lot of media attention because of the fact that it's open source. It is created by an organization from China. There are allegations that it stole data from OpenAI to use to train its model, but there are also allegations that OpenAI stole that data from users like us. So. The most significant thing about DeepSeek is the fact that it can perform at the same levels or even higher than ChatGPT, than Google Gemini, than all of the big popular AI models that are currently being used and on a small fraction of the resources. So basically it's really efficient, it's really cheap and it gets the job done, which is why the AI world was kind of shaken and considering how quickly that AI is being advanced just in the past few years, when is AI basically going to be taking over our jobs in cybersecurity and other tech fields? And that is the question I want to answer today. Number one, I want to say that yes, AI will definitely and has already taken over a lot of jobs. The biggest change is that teams are downsizing, which means if you originally had a team of five people who are doing some kind of work, then maybe nowadays they're cut down to two or three people doing the work of those same people, but with the added assistance of using an AI tool. And I'm sure you guys have all used AI by now, but this definitely does increase productivity to a measurable degree, but only for the tasks that are easily automated by AI that maybe previously took a long time, but now AI can do in just a few seconds. And the two specific areas that are being targeted the most in tech are specifically software engineering and anything related to data science, data analytics, especially because AI is really taking over any kind of data role very quickly. But what does this mean for cybersecurity professionals? So firstly, I want to say that yes, AI is probably going to take over various parts of your job as a cybersecurity professional. There are actually already AI SOC or security operations center tools out there where you can basically have a zero man SOC team, basically just feed it all of your network data, all of your endpoint data, and it'll look for any signs of potential threats or, or security breaches. Now this already is unprecedented. Like just five years ago, you know, no one would have thought that you could replace SOC analysts with an AI, but of course there still needs to be someone who is running the AI tools, actually checking for false positives, actually doing the hands-on work, you know, after any alerts are brought up or triaged. So there's still a need for cybersecurity professionals to do the work, but companies may be considering downsizing their teams because of what's happening in the AI space. However, there is a silver lining in all of this. And this is something that I've talked about in one of my previous videos regarding AI taking over cybersecurity jobs. And that is the fact that if you have worked in cybersecurity, you know that there is a very long laundry list of things that you have to do. As an example, in my previous role, where I was on a pretty small security team and there were always projects in our backlog that we could never get to because we had all these other projects that we were working on, as well as of course, reviewing any event logs, making sure we're keeping up with patches, making sure we're keeping up with exploits and vulnerabilities. So there's always a lot to do, but now with you know the introduction of AI tools to make our jobs easier and potentially save time, those AI tools that you can use to speed up your work are actually very helpful. And let's say you save 10 hours a week by using an AI tool. Now you can use that additional time to actually work on the projects on the backlog that have not been touched because there wasn't enough time to get to them until now. Now, of course, this does eventually go into the conversation of, doesn't that mean that one person is doing the work of potentially two people because they're taking on extra projects, they're taking on extra responsibility. And overall, yes, this does increase productivity overall for an organization and for a team. But this is a video on how to avoid AI from stealing your job. So I will answer that question right now. Number one, learn as much as you can about prompt engineering, about AI foundations, about what an AI model actually is, how it works. And maybe even if you have your own resources, whether it's in a home lab or maybe on a corporate device that has more resources, spinning up an AI model in your own local environments for you to use and play around with. This really is the future of where tech is going. AI is one of the biggest buzzwords for probably the next 10, 15 years. And honestly, if you work in tech, you already know this by now, continuous learning and making sure you're keeping up with cybersecurity, with tech news and trends is going to be the biggest differentiator between those who get left behind and those who advance in their careers. It's really hard to expect a job from 20 years ago to potentially still be relevant in another 20 years. Honestly, tech just moves quickly. And, and if you're in this industry, you have to keep up. I'll link a few AI resources and courses I personally recommend to go through and get familiar with so that you can future-proof yourself with AI foundations and that understanding for your future potential job. Number two is making sure that you're constantly staying up to date with the cybersecurity news and emerging technologies. So let's say right now you're working as an SOC analyst, but you obviously want a long career. So if a big percentage of SOC analyst work is pushed off onto AI, then it's also your responsibility to be able to figure out, hey, 
where is the next step for my career? And the best way to do that is looking at headlines. So cybersecurity news, tech news, just pick and choose your favorite news outlets. It could even be podcasts. This is a great way to learn about new technologies, learn about what the industry leaders are talking about and any sectors that they're predicting are going to be the next big thing. This is going to be how you're going to find your next job, your next career pivot. For example, if cloud technology is really taking off because of AI and a lot of companies, you know, spinning up their own cloud environments to test AI models locally on an environment that they can control, then you know, that could be an indication that cloud might be a good area to go into in the next five to 10 years. My main point with this is to not be so rigid and basing the future of your career on the past experiences that you've already had. The job that you have in 10 to 20 years may not even exist now. And, and that is something that we just have to get used to, especially as cybersecurity professionals. A lot of our jobs is to stay up to date on the latest and greatest for exploits, vulnerabilities. When there's a new technology, let's say for example, Web3, what are the ways that attackers could potentially exploit those technologies? And how can you as a cybersecurity professional figure out what skills that you need, what tools you need to learn, and what resources you need to get familiar with to be able to stay on top of everything and also understand what future hiring managers are going to be looking for on your resume. Okay, all this to say, it doesn't mean that cybersecurity is not a good area to go into. I personally still think it is one of the best areas to go into in tech compared to other sectors, especially because the World Economic Forum just listed cybersecurity and networking as their number two fastest growing skill in their Future of Jobs 2025 report. But for those of you who are interested in more structured learning, I'd recommend Simply Learn's online cybersecurity courses and programs. Simply Learn programs are developed in partnership with the world's leading universities and companies. This includes their professional certificate program in cybersecurity, which covers over 100 hours of live classes led by industry experts, three capstones, 40 plus technical cybersecurity projects, and integrated labs. Plus, you get hands-on experience with 15-plus tools like Metasploit, Burp Suite, Nmap, and more. And you'll also learn Gen AI and cybersecurity in their specialized module, along with live online masterclasses with industry experts. And once you complete the program, you'll earn your professional certificate in cybersecurity. You can check out Simply Learn and all their cybersecurity courses and programs linked in my description below. Thank you to Simply Learn for sponsoring this portion of the video, and let's get back to the rest of the topics. I've said it before and I'll say it again, cybersecurity is really meant for continuous learning, lifelong learners, and just having that trait is enough to prevent AI from stealing your job because you're always going to be ahead of the curve. Even if there's a new technology, if you set yourself up in a way where you have the skills already to be able to protect the next set of assets to secure against vulnerabilities that can be exploited in the future, then basically you're making it impossible to not get hired because you're familiar with all the new technologies of the future. Now, another thing I do wanna add in here is the fact that a lot of cybersecurity jobs and tech jobs in general are not necessarily slowing down in hiring because of AI. Another reason is the fact that Right now, the job market is a little bit of a dumpster fire. The biggest reason is that in the last few years, tech companies have done major layoffs where they laid off tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people who worked in tech and, and honestly had pretty cushy jobs. But now with the influx of really smart people from big companies like Google, like Amazon, these new candidates on the job market can sometimes be fighting for the same jobs that an entry level or early career professional are applying to. And that is because the job market is really rough and someone who may be more mid-level or senior level is willing to take a downgraded position to just get back into a job and of course just having a steady income so they may be more willing to take a pay cut or a title cut to be able to get out of the job market as fast as possible but on the other hand we have college graduates we have boot camp graduates early career professionals who are still looking for a job because maybe during covid times their offers were rescinded and they still haven't been able to get a full-time job in the industry those are the people that i really feel for and that is another reason why the job market is so competitive because you have people with little or no experience competing for the small handful of jobs that more senior mid-level professionals from big tech companies just because so many of them were laid off at the same time in such a short time window. So basically it is a hiring manager's market right now and there's less leverage for employees and candidates because there are just more people looking for a job than companies that are hiring for a position. So it definitely doesn't all have to do with AI but AI is definitely part of it because these are really just unprecedented times. You have two huge things happening with, with a super fast rise and advancement of AI, and then a really tough job market with many very talented senior individuals competing with more entry-level and early career folks. Honestly, this video is really just me explaining my thoughts on the overall job market, what is causing a lot of the hiring difficulties, not even to mention all the stuff about ghost jobs, some of the hiring freezes that are being done at the federal level or for government contractor roles. Nowadays, even government roles are no longer as safe and secure as they used to be. I remember back then, government contracting and government roles in general were kind of like the safe job where you most likely weren't going to get laid off or have any hiring freezes, but 
Nowadays, we're in a different world, so there really is a lot going on. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this in the comments below. And like I said in the beginning, cybersecurity is not going anywhere, but it definitely is changing. The field is changing, the hiring practices are changing, where candidates are coming from are changing, especially if you consider, let's say, a software engineer who may have gotten laid off. Here's all this news about how AI is taking over jobs, especially with Copilot and all the more advanced coding tools that are coming out. They may be pivoting into another safer area in tech and cybersecurity technically is a much safer sector than coding is right now. So they may decide to pivot into cybersecurity. So you also have those people who are pivoting into different sectors and making career changes into cybersecurity because it was also listed under the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report for the fastest growing skills, cybersecurity and networking came in as the number two second fastest growing skill right after AI. There's a lot of eyes on the cybersecurity sector right now, and that is another reason why a lot of the cybersecurity job markets is changing. All right, that is it for this video. I would love to hear your thoughts again in the comments below. Feel free to drop them. I also post daily updates on LinkedIn and Instagram, so if you want to connect on there, feel free to connect. They're all linked in my description. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I post videos weekly, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.